In this video, we're going to talk about plyometrics for rugby. Some of the common misconceptions about plyometrics, what they are, why they're important, and most importantly, how to train them. So let's get to it. Hey Renegades, Jamie Bain here from RugbyRenegade.com where we help rugby players get stronger, fitter, faster and stay injury free so they can dominate their opposition on the rugby field. Today we're talking about plyometrics. Firstly, what are plyometrics? Well basically, they're explosive jumping exercises that use the stretch shortening cycle. When you absorb energy centrically and then transfer that energy into propulsive concentric action, that's a plyometric action. Most sporting movements use the stretch shortening cycle. Now I want to debunk some common myths about plyos. Firstly, people mainly think plyos are about speed and power development, but their benefits are so much more. So in terms of energy efficiency, if you can absorb energy centrically and then use that elastic energy to propel you forward, you're not wasting much energy. So just imagine you've improved your plyometric efficiency by 10%. Consider the amount of foot contacts you have in a rugby match. That's a lot of energy to be saved. So if you're more energy efficient, you can run faster and harder for longer. Also, there'll be less buildup of fatigue. And what does fatigue cause? Injuries. You'll be more injury resilient. Research has even shown that plyometric training compared to resistance training alone is almost twice as effective at decreasing injuries. Another misconception is that people think plyometrics are dangerous for heavy players. Now, I'm not saying that all 120 kg props have to do uh, depth jumps from a meter high but they should be doing some sort of plyometrics to improve that efficiency. And over the long run, that'll actually decrease injuries. Now, don't get me wrong, if you, if you suffer from patella tendinopathy and things like that, then you will struggle with plyometrics, but you should still do some low-level plyometrics. Another myth about plyometrics is you need a strength base before you can start doing plyometric activities. Now, if you remember what I said before, most sporting actions involve some sort of stretch shortening cycle. So you're already doing them if you're running and jumping in a game. Often people say you need to be squatting double body weight. This is just a myth. Everyone should be doing plyometrics, but it's how they do them that's more important. Start with basic, low level things, even skipping and ankle, uh, ankle hops and ankling are important to do, and slowly build up the amount of volume. Maybe start with 50 foot contacts twice per week, and then build up to 70, eventually maybe 100 twice per week. And research has shown that type of volume has decreased uh, risk of injury. So I hope that's cleared up a few misconceptions about plyometrics and shown you there's more to them than just speed and power. If you want to know some plyometric exercises you can use, check out our videos. Uh, we've got some single leg and some double leg variations. Any other questions about plyometrics, just again, hit us up in the comments below. But most importantly, try incorporating some plyometrics into your training program. They'll help you get stronger, fitter, faster, and stay injury free. Thank <laughs> you.